Hello, my name is Leah Hardenat. And I'm Matt Dallana, and today we will be unpacking the Jim Keekstra case. In 1984, Jim Keekstra, a high school teacher, was put into the public spotlight of both the media and the criminal court when it was found that he was teaching anti-Semitic propaganda to his students in a social studies classroom, including denying that the Holocaust ever happened and forcing his students to agree with his views in their essays and classroom discussions. His resulting dismissal, revoking of teacher certificate by the ATA, and eventual criminal trial became a roaring debate across both the courts and public whether freedom of speech is absolute, what constitutes hate speech, where to draw the line between freedom of speech and protection of vulnerable minorities, and whether a law against hate speech can be realistically enforced. Initially, Jim Keystra taught in the local high school in Eckville, Alberta for 14 years. He also served as an auto mechanic and at one point served as the mayor of Eckville. He was described as being well-liked by students, staff, and the general community. However, his teaching practices in his classroom were generally not well known. Aside from his students, few people realized that Jim Keekstra was teaching that the Jewish people are simultaneously in control of capitalism, socialism, and communism in a plot to destroy the Christian way of life. His descriptions of history were generally treated with apathy. It wasn't until a concerned parent, Susan Maddox, launched a complaint against Keekstra in 1981 after noticing anti-Semitic themes in her son's essays that an investigation was launched. Keekstra was warned to stop teaching his Jewish conspiracy theories in the classroom, and when he didn't, he was fired by the school board in 1982. In reaction, the ATA pledged to support Keekstra and appeal his firing. Many of his students started a petition to support their teacher, and Susan Maddox and her family began receiving hate mail from other members of the community. However, within the next two years, the ATA revoked his membership and stripped him of his teacher certificate, possibly as a response to a rookie rural member of the Alberta legislature being quoted in the press for also doubting the Holocaust. Afterwards, Alberta's Attorney General decided to prosecute Keekstra, and on January 11, 1984, Jim Keekstra was charged under Section 319.2 of the Criminal Code of Canada with commuting statements willfully and promoting hatred against an identifiable group by teaching his students anti-Semitic views. Keekstra initially applied to quash the case, saying that this charge violated freedom of expression under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Section 2. He also stated his presumption of innocence under Section 11 of the Charter was violated by the Criminal Code, which affords a defense of truth to the willful promotion of hatred. The court dismissed the application, stating that the Criminal Code did not violate Keekstra's freedom of expression or defense of truth. In 1985, Keekstra was tried and convicted and was fined $5,000. He appealed the decision to the Alberta Court of Appeal, which agreed with Keekstra's arguments and struck the case down. Another appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada concluded the violation of his charter rights was justified due to hate propaganda. A retrial was ordered by the Alberta Court of Appeal, in which Keisha was found guilty once again and was fined $3,000. He once again appealed the decision and was ordered another retrial. This time, the Supreme Court upheld the conviction, and in 1996, Keisha was sentenced to a one-year suspension, one-year probation, and 200 hours community service. The Keisha case resulted in the first conviction under Canada's hate propaganda laws since their enactment in 1970. It demonstrated how the freedom of expression in Canada is not absolute and that expressions of hate can be viewed as criminal. It has also showed how poorly suited criminal law is in dealing with this kind of social control as the process took 12 years. Critics of the Keekstra case viewed it as a complete waste of time and resources. They also mentioned that laws and courts cannot forcibly change a person's ideals or silence them. Keekstra was still active as he became the martyr of free speech to some people and even became leader of a federal government party in 1987. However, the Keekstra case has helped Canadians realize that criminal prosecutions are not the best way to discourage offensive speech. Paula Simon stated that we must fight lies with truth and fight ignorance with knowledge. Since we cannot silence all the evil speech in the world, we must instead teach our children and ourselves to think critically and debate freely.